This is Infection, the survival podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, October 19th, 2021, episode 353. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome into another edition of Infection, the survival podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. My name is Nick Craig. You can follow me on various social media platforms by visiting my website, nickcraig.net or nickcraig.com. You can also check out my daily political rantings by downloading the Wilmington's Morning News podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. And of course... The most important website on the internet. You know, a lot of people would say that's Google or you know, Bing or YouTube. No, it's infectionpodcast.com. And we've got as much traffic as those big companies to prove it. Uh, joining us as he does each and every week, having to upgrade the servers over there, Brian, because of just so much traffic to infectionpodcast.com. <laughs> Billions of hits a day is Brian yes. with an eye, the webmaster Aldridge. Hello, Brian. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I am doing well. And of course, if you want to find me at Brian Aldridge on Gab and Parlor, uh, my blog, biteoftech.com. And as Nick said, go to infectionpodcast.com and make sure you join our server on Discord. I haven't removed that Steam group. I'll do it during the show and it'll mysteriously be gone by the end of the show. Um, but other than that, we do have a really nice uh, kind of a notification system in Discord now that we can pre-program the shows. It'll pop up little reminder that we're and you can subscribe to those notifications so it makes it really useful if maybe we will have a show on a different day you don't realize it it's a great way to get a notification of that uh we also have our arc servers and we have you know weight workout group we got a lot of different things in there uh people talking about uh games and other life things so if you want to do that join our discord it's totally free web-based app mobile app and a desktop app uh, we have all our video forms of the podcast. So if you want to watch Twitch, YouTube, BitChute, and DLive, uh, you can do that during the show. And then uh, a number of those have the recordings after the fact for a period of time at least. And then if you want to listen to the show, go to the very lower end, right hand side of the website. We have links for whatever platform, device, a lot of different ways to listen to the show. But if you are listening, I really encourage you to jump to the particular episode that you're going to be listening to and follow along on your phone. Our website is very mobile friendly, so that makes it really easy. You can jump to the particular episode and click links for uh, articles, maybe a video, um, whatever it is that we reference during the show, it's all in there. So you're, uh, I really encourage you to follow along because it'll really help you to get a little more or go deeper into a story than what we do. If you want to support us, uh, you can do that. Just go to the, the support tab up top. Um, we've got infectionpodcast.com forward slash support and you know, Prime Gaming Subs, Humble Bundle, Amazon, just lots of ways that you can... Uh, support the show for next year hopefully yes sir <clears throat> absolutely um what's going what's going on brian what's going on in the world of uh world of brian well i was telling you a little bit uh pre-show <laughs> you know i've got bursitis in my elbow which makes me feel really old but uh well, just the shoe fits yeah so it's uh it's healing so next week i can go play hockey again so i'd take two weeks off uh so that's kind of sad but both leagues are starting so full bore back into hockey um, should keep me at least alive uh, other than that, not too much. Just been working and hanging out the house with my family. Excellent plan. And uh, you had any uh, chance to play any more uh, New World this since uh, since we last spoke? Just, I mean, just a little bit. Mainly just doing some quests, getting a little bit more of uh, levels in. But man, my my week's been just with work and everything else. Been pretty busy, so I haven't put in the time that I really wanted to, as far as to get to certain levels. But I, you know, I have been moving forward. I'm still enjoying the game. Since I put that app on there, I have it running every setting on very high, and the thing runs perfect. Excellent. So uh, zero issues now that uh, you know I got that one thing fixed with my video card. And well, it, it, we, the thing is, is it is very stable. You got to think for them just releasing this and it being an MMO with tons of players. Uh, I think it's going pretty smoothly. Well, yeah, no question about it. So we've got a uh, we've got a lot in our notes here, Brian. Um, yes, you said there's a couple things that are. A little bit more interesting than the other so where uh, where shall we begin this tuesday evening all right well first let's start out with microsoft um one thing happened in the past like a week week and a half because some few of these things were happened right before last week's show we carried them over mm -hmm. uh but microsoft their azure servers had the worst ddos attack that they've ever had and it was a 
four terabits per second uh, DDoS attack that was hitting hitting their servers. It was UDP attack, um, and none of their sites or none of their services were impacted. You know, as far as being down, I'm sure there was some sort of sluggishness. How much? How much traffic? Two point four terabits per second, and they were able to mitigate that. They mitigated that. That's which impressive. is a pretty big, pretty good deal. Pretty big deal across all of their different. You know, they got so much stuff going on right now. Their their traffic probably regularly is huge. Just you know, with whatever they're serving to people across all their platforms and Office three sixty five and everything else. Um, but it hit it hit two point four terabits per second, um, and you know it. it 1.7 terabits per second and then you know like half a little over half a terabit per second i mean it was just the short volley so i guess they were just trying to hit them and just like knock out services so i thought that would be interesting for people that are interested in i mean this affects gaming as well because this is a big issue that we have in gaming of people we had this happen in i mean we're in an h1z1 shirt right now you remember when the h1z1 shirts were getting de- or the uh servers were getting ddosed there was yes. a period of time we well, could not log into H one Z one. Well, I yeah, I mean, couldn't tell if it was DDoSing or server issues. That's one of the uh, yeah, but that's well, one point but, they got they got hit. Well, and that's one thing you I remember is remember when you would drop like everything you would keep running. They wouldn't tell you that you were disconnected for a long time because it never checked with the server. You know, to really, oh, it would just kind so. of you'd keep running, and then when they connected to the servers again, everything around you kind of pop into place, and that's why you'd have such weird issues. Uh, but you know, the service would be getting DDoS and we'd be like, all right, we've been running and just, you couldn't turn, like you just keep running <laughs> whichever direction you were going in H1Z1. So you remember when uh, the, uh, this, <laughs> you remember when the, the desync where the cars used to take off and fly into the air? Oh yeah. And, yeah, and then, <laughs> or, or you'd be driving and like the littlest thing would happen and your car would just explode or the, there was the, the, the pole or whatever it was in the middle of the road that people would hit that was invisible. Yeah, remember yeah. people drive and there was some invisible object in the middle of the street and bam <laughs> they would just smash into it and just explode <laughs> it would just immediately immediate. destroy their car yeah good, so, good that, that, that was a lot of fun but uh pretty impressive and i think that's a good sign for the industry especially this is one reason for having companies that have infrastructure like this run these type of games mm, yeah. uh amazon is running you know amazon could take i'm pretty sure a pretty hefty ddos attack on their servers if they needed to um azure so whatever you know may get hosted on microsoft servers at some point that's related to gaming they're demonstrating here we have the ability to mitigate a ddos attack um and for some companies where i mean think of companies when their games that when they're at their hottest and what the amount of loss they have when a ddos happens not only in maybe money but reputation which turns into money because that turns into no sales and so I think this re- this speaks very much for some, one of the things I've been really concerned about in gaming is being able to get a place for you to host a server that's not going to be taken down when someone's pissed at your game, right? Mm, yeah. uh, because Quite that well. can destroy that yeah. can yeah that can destroy a, a video game, especially when it's starting out. You put them down for a couple weeks, they won't recover from that. Well, uh, no, and well, it's, uh, let me take it a step further. You launch a new video game on a Monday or a Tuesday, and you get hit with the DDoS one, you know, two or three days into, uh, you know, nope. for the first two or three days. Brian, that in itself yep. might be a KO. I mean, that just that yeah. that might be it right there. Just knock it's, out. Well, the problem is it's too easy to do. It's too oh, easy I'm to sure. do a DDoS nowadays, where you can just take servers offline at at your whim. Um, and I, it's, it's not really that big of a, I mean, if you have a very interactive server manager and, you know, they're sitting there watching it and banning things and just trying to mitigate it and maybe come with some scripts to do it somewhat automatic. Uh, but there's just some that you can't quite mitigate. So, and this is a perfect example, you know, someone takes some time and even does a fraction of this one against somebody's gaming servers that the whole network of servers will go down. Yeah. Especially, um, and especially on a launch, you also have, you know, traffic from new users, which, for all intents and purposes, yep. can be seen as a DDoS as well because everybody's clicking a refresh and log in. Yep. That can act as a kind of a pseudo DDoS, even though there's no ill intent or um, yep. you know mal uh, bad Malcontent. practices behind it. Malcontent behind it, yep. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so I think this this hopefully will will show that we can because I I was kind of thinking we we're going to hit a point where you know we would just for an, anti cheat and. You know, because the industry was so slow catching up on this. And we have a little bit later talking about that. 
Um, mm-hmm. But you know, with all these things, it's difficult to keep up with the industry. Uh, you almost have to go to where you're doing this remote gaming thing, like the cloud gaming that they're talking about. Because if you can't stop, when you have let people have direct access to game servers and you can't stop that, you know, the next step is you just give them a window to view their game and they don't have actually any direct access to the server itself. Yeah. Uh, you know, for a game that really cares. And I just think that if they can, if they can do this, this is better for the competitive gamer. <laughs> you don't want to be playing yeah, no behind a, a, a live stream of your game. Yeah. So, uh, so that is something new, uh, that I thought that people would have fun with another, uh, another thing that's interesting is China. Now that they've banned Bitcoin mining is officially, uh, or uh, technically 0% share of the global hash rate when it comes to Bitcoin mining. So supposedly nobody is uh, is mining. USA is now number one. Says USA number one uh, when it comes to Bitcoin mining. Another, I guess there's another throwback to H one Z one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they are, yeah. Supposedly they're they're not doing anything. I'm assuming people that are doing this are doing it through some sort of VPNs and, and things to make it to where they look like they're not in the country. Uh, but that is claiming you know because one thing is gigawatts you know gigawatts of power i think more that's it i think since they're a socialist country and they provide everything i think they view that as eating away it's taking from others to give to yourself is how they view it because you're taking the country's power because you don't pay for the power yourself of course you know and then you're taking all of theirs that's the beauty of our system is if we want to make money on what we're we buy the power and then we make money on it right we buy it and that way everything grows. Well, here you see when they view everything as a, you know, for instance, power as a shared resource that you don't have more right to than anyone else, unless you're providing more, they view this as a very selfish act because you're generating Bitcoins for yourself. You're not giving to the community. So we'll see how this continues to go. I mean, I, maybe they'll keep Bitcoin mining banned forever but i'm sure at some point they may especially if it starts becoming more legitimate currency and everything yeah um yeah ph says china's china is mining in texas you know 40 chess Correct. moves perfect <laughs> uh so that that is uh that is an interesting piece of of uh information we'll see if uh we'll see if it stays that way um let's jump let's jump ahead a little bit sure. valve made an interesting decision here this week and they've decided to ban all games with NFTs, which are okay, that I'm fine with that. Well, hold or on cryptocurrency. A second. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, hold on a second here, Mr. Gustavo yeah. Brian. Why are you okay with this? Um, now, NFTs, I mean, I'm okay because it's a physical device. It, it, it can be, it's like a, it's not a physical you, thing, but it's, but, but I'm saying you're buying something that only you have, which then could be in the game. I mean, I'm, they could put it in, they couldn't put it in. I don't think it really affects. It's like a D, it's like an enhanced deluxe DLC. That's what or, I'm you saying. know, yeah. enhanced version of a game. You you could buy an NFT of something and w- there's actually uh, a company, Dead by Daylight, is now getting flacked right now for offer- selling NFTs of their c- character models. Uh, but what that happens, what happens is that also opens you up to like various DLCs. They're like selling you something mm-hmm. and then it's kind of like, it's kind of like the physical devices that they give you when you buy the super collector's editions of a game. <laughs> that but it's digital. Uh, you know, people I think are getting more b- bent out of shape about this. But Steam says no NFTs and no cryptocurrency. Uh, I'm more concerned with you know this blockchain chain technology. I think is a big part of gaming in the future. I think it's one of the, especially for online games where you want to prevent duping and things like this. Uh, it makes me nervous that they're preventing that type of technology. One thing that uh, Epic says. You know, they put out something and they said, you know, we're open to blockchain games, you know, after Steam banned them. Well, that's what I want to ask. So they're blocking. Mm -hmm. They're going after blockchain. Yeah. Any of those type of technologies that are in games. So NFTs, cryptocurrencies, blockchains, all of that. Now, blockchains, I mean, we talked a lot. It's been a long time since we talked about blockchain and what that means. But we showed a little video where they demonstrated it was pretty much a wizard RPG style game. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Remember that? And in their inventory system was blockchain. So that you didn't have the ability to create something on your own. Um, 
you couldn't and dupe put an it item. into the could game. Spawn you couldn't, something you in. couldn't yeah. dupe because this because it was blockchain and it was like an item. <laughs> you know, it was like it's a real an verifiable item. item. It's yeah. An item. Uh, you know, and so and so with this, that I think will make a big difference in online games because it prevents so many of those things that we struggle with. You can actually keep track of everything in the game, you know, and if it's an item that has value, you want to have it in a place that it's not going to get lost. Um, and you can have your own kind of side, you know, whatever the values are of all these things. It's its own side market. Um, you know, a value, an item is worth an actual item value. Like, you know, you're trading real things, uh, you know, and there's no, you, you know that it's pure because nothing's been injected into it. Uh, and so here the same, even the NFTs, uh, you know, and NFTs can be a lot of different things. I think most people, I put a little thing for uh, a link in here. If people are interested in kind of learning more about what an NFT is, but that's kind of what they do in video games. The problem is steam is the person that decides what they have and what they don't have. Correct. Yeah. When it I comes to a lot of these, a lot of these things, when they're sharing and they're letting them use their kind of fake blockchain of storing an item in their their storage and they'll let you pull it out i, just, I mean they, it seems like they don't want competition yeah but what is i i still so i i don't i just don't understand the rationale like steam mm -hmm. has steam has kind of been a no not kind of been steve has been a pretty wide open platform i mean there are games yeah. that are very sexual i mean you can look at all like the point and click uh what, what are the, the graphic novel you know porn games that are on steam mm -hmm. as long as the actions aren't illegal steam has pretty much been wide open as it yeah kind of should be right if you want to make a game if there's a marketplace for a game with big jiggling yep. boobs and you want to build that and put it on steam who the hell is steam to tell you that you shouldn't make that or you shouldn't buy it so okay, i guess my you, question you, for this you is you want to know why, why? Okay, well, why? Yeah, that's what I well that's what I because don't understand. It bypasses their payment system. It's an alternate payment system which they're getting ready to go and fight and you know with all these other companies against things like people like Epic who say let's uh you know let's make it to where people can have their own way of payment. They don't even have to have a credit card system. They can use virtual currencies. They mm. can do whatever they want. How are you going to do virtual currency in a game that's actually worth anything? You have to put it on a blockchain or something that's truly secure. Because the currency is only as valuable as it's it's you know as it is safe, uh, and so I think for this they view this as a way to possibly allow people to come up with their own form of payments or anything you know inside of a game and bypass their little credit card transaction system that they do. So would you say that this is the not equivalent, but this is similar to what apple is doing with the play store about not allowing individuals to do some yes. of those off but but let's this be is, clear they're way doing that they still do allow off-site transactions because for yes. games like planet side i'm just going way back mm -hmm. i'm going way back yeah, yeah, in yeah. time planet side used to create a daybreak account put money on your daybreak account and buy stuff on their website yep. it would transfer into the game but I guess this would be. But the thing is, they can they can this? they can track that, right? You can track another dollar amount that they. So if they wanted to have them report on that, or they want to change their, they wanted to change their terms, and you know, have some information on that, or require them to report that. But if you have your own form of of currency, how do you report on that and compare it to the currency that you have? Like, how do you know what you're losing <laughs> when when the currency is even comparable to the dollar, right? Think that I think that is more of what they're concerned about, um, you know, it could, because it's not trackable and it could be something to where people are doing transactions for, they can't track the transactions. They can't, you know, it, it opens up if someone wanted to maybe inject something that Steam couldn't quite understand or see, I guess you could do it through something like this. You could be passing images, you know, all kinds of different things through some sort of encrypted technology. I, there could be other reasons, but so, one is microtransactions, and then I think it's a lack of control. They don't have the ability to control it. Well, there's this game. I think I don't even I don't know if we we I don't think we've talked about. It. It's called Age of Rust. It's got no relation to Rust at all. Um, it's a would you, the description, Brian. Age of Rust mm -hmm. is a first person adventure game. Collect in game NFTs for solving puzzles. That's literally the game. This obviously is a big issue. So a couple of tweets from. 
the uh, developers, the, or rather the developer behind the this game, Age of Rust, he says, community, a few minutes ago we were notified that Steam will be kicking, quote, all blockchain games off of the platform, including Age of Rust, because NFTs have value behind the scenes, or rather because yep. NFTs have value. Behind the scenes, we've had good communication and been upfront with Steam. He goes on to say, we chose to be upfront about blockchain gaming and NFTs. As a result, we finally lost the battle with Steam. While I'm disappointed for Age of Rust being removed, the point is m more to the fact that blockchain gaming as a whole is going to be removed. This is a setback for all. Steam's point of view is that the items have value and they don't allow items that can have real world value on their platform. While I respect their choice, I fundamentally believe that NFTs and blockchain games are the future. This is why I started this journey with all of you. At this point, we will put our energy back into game dev, creating more NFTs and empowering the community than trying to fight Steam alone. We will continue to publish, we will continue to publish our game elsewhere. We are moving forward. We heart NFTs, we heart Engine, and we heart our community onwards, onwards, and onwards. I do think it's interesting, and I didn't know this, Brian, that Steam does not allow items that can have real-world value on their platform. What about Counter-Strike? Yeah. People are spending thousands of real-life dollars on well, knives and okay. shit. But that's outside. The value is not, you know, they're doing a trade outside and then doing a trade inside of Steam. I just feel like I understand, they don't like this, the lack of, of control. Steam yeah, still controls that transaction. Thing. But it's the same thing. But Steam I mean, doesn't I, control it. They don't control I mean, the transaction of the item. I remember you being can have a, items in game that don't get transact, don't get traded inside of Steam. They get traded in the game itself. True. That's what I think they're concerned about. Yeah, I I don't know. I just I have a I I just I have an issue with the, the, everything. You can make the argument that anything that is tradable inside Steam has a value outside of the platform. Yeah, value could, is determined anything, by what somebody is willing thing, to pay for. But the only way that you can get that item from one person to another, you know, in in a way that seems to have value because you do some sort of traction transaction out the game steam is the middleman for those transactions right True. with blockchain the server would be the middleman in a more serious manner you know verify or whatever the the, the chain itself would be that yeah. i think they don't like losing control of that because right now when the people are forced to still even do the transaction through steam they're in the process i think they're worried about being taken out of the process where they can't m monopolize on that in the future in the same way because if people get used to doing it outside of their system steam is lost right right now the only reason what does steam do it lets you download but you can purchase your games you can download them and you can launch them back yeah, in the day people it. used to launch them from their desktop right yeah um steam wants to keep control of those inventory things because they really don't have much else when it comes to your game they have achievements and they've got items that you earn you know, or, you know, now that you can store that are from the game, which is kind of like a blockchain type of, of, of doing, but Steam is the blockchain. They're a fake blockchain. It's not really a secure, you know, they could very, change the numbers on there. Some Someone could get hacked and it could be changed. A very fake blockchain. Believe me, I don't like it. I don't <laughs> like the fake blockchain. Real blockchain is the future. Fake blockchain, no go. But let's say something really got value in a game. Dude, there is stuff that really has value, Brian. Yeah, but but I'm saying but I'm saying Steam Steam and a Steam employee could go and give themselves copies of that item, you know. Oh, if they absolutely. It. And then, you know, if they didn't get caught, they would have it, right? Uh, with blockchain, you can't. They couldn't. It just you know there there would be a log of it somewhere. You know, it would be there would be a record of it. And so I I just I think that it they should be doing it. It's better, uh, but I think they realize they can't control it. Uh, you know, yeah, they this don't want to lose me that the wrong control. way. This really well, Unless they, what if what if they're going to be releasing some sort of a blockchain based ba a, something in the background for games that they can use to store their things because Steam's way of doing it's crappy. Maybe you know not that they're going to do it well, but maybe in the background the reason that they're so hesitant because they want to release it. No, I, I still they want something you use. It, well, that I'm sure that could be part of it, but I I just am really I'm really taken aback by this. Steam has been Steam has we have. Well, we've been doing the show seven years now, seven and a half years, something like that, something like that. Yeah. How how often do we talk about Steam removing stuff and cracking down 
on things. They don't do that. It's yeah. just not they what Steam it does. Yeah. They're a marketplace. And they have pretty much allowed anything unless it's literal, you know, child pornography or something illegal on their platform. Yeah. As they yep. always have. So this is this is a big difference. And if in fact blockchain gaming and and NFTs inside of games is something that is going to be the future, well, I think what this does is open up the door for Tim Once Sweeney. Again. If he's interesting yep. and wants to embrace something like this. While it's not a big community right now, he could get these games like this Age of Rust, get them over on the Epic Game Store, make them sign yep. a um, some sort of exclusivity in case Valve goes, ah, crap, we screwed up, and be yep. the home of NFTs. And I mean, it, you know, who knows how popular it will or won't get, but this just seems to open the door for Epic if they want to go ahead and do something and say, hey, we're you know embracing it some of these new technologies that frankly. We don't know how they're going to be used in video games yet. We're not really sure exactly what they might transform into, but they're cool technologies, and hey, we support it. And I, I bet you, I bet you, right now, Sweeney has somebody sitting there working on building some sort of a blockchain thing that they could plug into games <laughs> for them. Say so here, build one so that people have an inventory system that uses blockchain technology, so they don't have to figure out and understand blockchain one hundred percent to implement it, right? I, I can imagine them trying to do something like that, uh, you know, and him just loading the games getting people to f load games with blockchain technology because who can't put them on their marketplace? Steam. It's the perfect way for them to really get a bunch of games on the market. Say, hey, we'll provide you with all the, you know, here's a great tool for doing it. Everybody they can get to start using blockchain and their stuff all of a sudden has to use everything but Steam. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I'm pretty sure Steam will change their tune. Uh, but maybe Absolutely. that if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Um, so uh, another thing, let's go ahead and stick with with Valve here, Epic or sorry, Valve and Steam here for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a thing called Deck Verified now, and this is for their Steam Deck, and it's a little checkbox so that because they remember they said every game plays on the Steam Deck, and then all of a sudden that was retracted a little bit. Now they have a compatibility program for the Steam Deck, which will show a checkbox next to a game if it is verified to be working with the Steam Deck. Um, a little yellow eye with a circle with a little eye in it that's yellow uh, for the circle. And that means it's playable. There's a circle with a cross through. It means it's, it's not supported like Alex, which was a VR game. Um, and then Day of Defeat, which is a built on a pretty old system uh, as far as software. And that one, they says unknown. So it has a little question mark in there. So that'll be the new system that you'll probably start seeing around Steam and everywhere else uh, for marking but they do have a place that you can go look at software and it's a pretty much a information page about all of this but they yeah you'll see next to steam there's a little icon there uh that a little green check mark for all the games that will run correctly um on the on the steam deck and that's right on the store and i assume this is coming from yep. a mix of community stand community response and valve themselves uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if they've gone through and somehow tested. Uh, I haven't seen a place where they're saying to give input on this, but there must be a place that they've either run some tests and kind of got well, the they, basics. Yeah, I guess they they can't have, they couldn't have asked for input yet since nobody has nobody has these things. Yeah. I wonder, you know, if a new game. You know, I, sure I bet you they had, Well, what? look at the engine. So what, mostly, what matters on these is the game engine and certain things on whether or not it's going to run correctly on this platform. Uh, they remember they have that middle piece. They have that little application that's the middle piece. They're getting those uh, Proton, I think it was called. Uh, they're getting those things to line up with Proton to make the game work. So they they know game by game, and you know Proton I think has some generalities for various game engines and things like that to get it kind of there. But I think that's what they're basing it on is based on what Proton needs. Like what does that game provide and what does it have? You know what engine yeah. is it using and things like that. And it does say Valve's testing indicates um, so that it seems as if right now they're doing. I would imagine that once the platform is out, once the game or once the, the games are out, I should say, um, yeah, or the devices, that there will be some sort of feedback button or something where you can say, hey, you know, you've got this game listed as verified works and mm -hmm. the reality is it doesn't or it doesn't work as intended or something of that nature. So that, that that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and so I think I think this will be nice because it'd be an excellent sales 
thing for, for the Steam Deck because look at all the people that have that sit there and browse games through the store all the time. Uh, this is going to be something where they'll start seeing that check mark, check mark, check mark. Be like, dude, this thing runs on almost anything because it runs on a, so many of the games, especially the ones you're going to see on that front page. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think that's going to be a pretty big deal for them. All right. Uh, let's qu- okay. We've got a lot on Activision and Blizzard. Sure. Uh, so there's there's been some things. First of all, there's the new anti cheat system that's closer to what we've been talking about in the past. It's a kernel level driver uh, that allows it to communicate more effectively with the operating system so that it can actually ha- be able to prevent cheats and different type of cheats in a better way or detect cheats. Uh, so this is something it's, and th- here's their quotes. Another layer in the battle against cheaters is the evolving use of machine learning. Uh, that's another thing this is able to do. Uh, so they're using machine learning algorithms to examine gameplay data from the server, helping to identify suspicious behavior trends and add another layer of security as well as overall, you know, their their ricochet, which is the driver level, uh, because it's going to be using what they call machine learning, which is, you know, AI, uh, just trying to guess if this person Buster. based on their activities. Yeah, it's, it's trying to guess based on the type of movements and activities that they're doing. Are they cheating? Uh, and so this is this is what they're going to try to do. Uh, Kernel based, I think, is where they're going to have to go to. And I think once they get everything kernel based, then they can start to lock it down, especially, you know, Windows 11. Um, they're starting to lock the operating system down a little bit more. I think this is going to be a big difference. They're antivirus. They're starting to move this way to where they're really locking down the file system of the operating system. There is an option that usually right now is uh, checked as off on this. So when 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 you check that box like it locks down these where these files sit you know in windows and windows system mm-hmm. and uh, it makes it to where it manages those very tightly and once you're to that level where the antivirus is verifying all those files are not messed with and then those files are the one determining whether or not the cheating is happening on the system it makes it very difficult to bypass that so I think this is going to make a big, big difference. There may be certain cheat types of cheats that are still going to be effective against this, but I think it's going to cut out a lot of them. And this is like a, this ricochet is um, kind of a similar thing to, you know, easy anti-cheat or battle yeah. eye. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a brand of anti-cheat. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it is what their anti-cheat they made gotcha. or, you know, whatever they're using ricochet. Uh, gotcha. But it, it's it, Ricochet is the name of the anti-cheat, but it is a kernel level uh, anti-cheat, gotcha. which you don't see as as much right now. So uh, so this we will see if this makes a big difference in the cheating. Yeah, I bet you if it does, because, you know, these guys are look at how many people play Call of Duty and the type of stuff they have to deal with on all platforms. Uh, if this is really effective, you know, I, I, I would would not be surprised seeing the industry start moving towards for the bigger games, this type of kernel level uh, anti-cheat. Interesting. Because it, it's the next step. It's really all you have to verify that something is not being manipulated or interfered with. So uh, there, I, there is a, a frequently asked questions link on there. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, Ricochet, there is a video. If you want to play that video really quick. I just played it. Uh, oh, did you play it in the while, background? Okay, yeah, sorry, while we were talking. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah. And, uh, and on this, there's information like how does the kernel level work? What is the kernel level driver? It goes through all those type of questions that depending on your level of expertise on, on computers, uh, it'll should answer most of those questions that you have. So if you want to go check out that, it'll have a lot more details. And then we have a couple of articles discussing it as well. Perfect. There um, you go. Check it out. Now, and some other things have been happening with the whole legal lawsuit. Remember, some of the things I've just remember we had uh executive producers overwatch executive producer left their chief legal officer resigned um mm, you know they started getting talks. investigated by four states and federal uh, federal regulators um it, it's just it really you know they, they were getting subpoenas that their whole world there you know they tried hiring a, a former disney exec to make as their new hr boss hoping that would fix this but the whole thing has just kind of gone out of control. It's really been uh, affecting their, their, their wow. It's just a lot of it's re, the, their perception, and it's been affecting their sales quite a bit. Uh, what they've done in response, because I, I really I don't 
all of that has kind of happened and people have been tracking that, but I've been tracking their response to this. Uh, one thing is they've gone through and started changing names of characters, dialogue and things like that to reduce transphobia, racism and sexism in their game in wow, world of Warcraft. Uh, I wanted to kind of give you some examples of that because these are things that have been in the game since a lot of them, since very much towards the beginning. Uh, but you have, you gotta remember this game has succubuses and I mean, just yeah. all kinds of things in it, you know, and the so, succubuses talk dirty to, you know, they say, would you say that this is a, was, was, it was, why would you consider that? A, is it a considered a mythical game? Yeah. Oh, well, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, a, 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 it's a RPG, but it's more of a mythical style. RPG. Mythical. Okay. So, so stuff like things like succubuses are not the most shocking thing in it's, the world based on no what, i mean that's part of that is. world yeah, yeah exactly it, it, that's what i'm the saying the thing yeah. is there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of lore not necessarily wow lore but there's a lot of lore that is built into rpgs in general and you know a lot of it's from uh dungeons and dragons and a lot of these that have built the structure because the dungeons and dragons has dwarves and succubuses and mages all the things that they have in here they got from somewhere else and now they're viewing that as you know a little bit too risky. So, uh, for example, uh, on here it says, uh, "Here is what it used to say," and then here's what the new one says. Didn't I tell you my new domination techniques would work? And he said, instead they put it to, "Didn't I tell you my new technique would work?" You know, so they're taking out, and it's not even like it's a bad word. Here, my ritual torture can go a long way. A few well chosen rituals can go a long way. I mean, they're changing things that aren't really. I mean, th this is just take, it's making it so just borderline, like dull. I mean, they're just trying to make it not even risque, I guess is the word I'm saying. Uh, and it's just kind of weird, you know, just stuff that doesn't need to be changed. They, they, there's, if you scroll down, I mean, there's just a lot of them there. For instance, I believe I was showing my motorcycle to some hot babes at the time. You know, this is a piece of just, uh, words you know that they're saying in the game and said they said i believe i am showing my motorcycle to some fans of mine at the time jay so you know, Christ. <laughs> it's just you know stupid stuff like that i like this um, one here this is no 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 this is my favorite i've been very very naughty it's then changed to someone's been very naughty i mean it's like okay we'll go down to didn't get rid of any words listen to this okay here's what gets me yeah kill me it. or kill the girl that's what the guy says. You know yeah. what he says? Now they say, kill me or kill him. Well, that's pretty sexist towards me as What's a guy. What's the difference? Why Why is it okay to kill a guy but not a girl in a video game? That's more sexist than anything, right? I mean, they're saying, you can say kill a guy, but you can't say kill a girl. Why? Well, then the other one, why someone shut that? this, somebody shut this little girl up. Someone shut him up. Hmm. Yeah, he's calling him a little, a little little girl. Do you want a dolly little girl? Would that make it better? Do you want a tissue boy? Why do they have to change all the girls and no, anything I'm not that's a slightly big, disparaging I'm, to boys? I'm not a big fan I, of this. I, can't, I already canceled. I canceled my Wow subscription. Boy uh, with a question mark. That is uh, that's a term that can yeah, be I know. very much misconstrued. We're gonna have to change that here next year. Yeah, that's year. gonna have to change def definitely. But does why that does it make say sense? Just them or it's or whatever why? Why is pronoun? every single one of those? that was a girl is now a man and they're saying kill the guy make uh somebody shut this girl up, little girl up it says somebody shut him up why do they have to be a guy to make it better well because they're in why if if a girl is a collected is a is a protected class then that means we are the protectors right so you, you're either saying that they're equal and they don't need to be protected and they can fend for their own you know in general in the world or you're saying that they need protected here. It sounds like you're saying they need protected that they don't have the ability to, you know, you're saying only a guy can be, you know, be talked to in this way because of what a girl can't handle it. She's not strong enough. I mean, this is a game where you play guys and girls play side by side. The characters are not weaker or stronger based on whether male or female. Okay. Why are they changing this? It, it just makes zero Great sense question. in the whole thing. So well, it just yeah. frustrates me. It, this whole thing, there's just the, you, sc you scroll down and it's just stupid. No, and just go, it looks like it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. 
because a lot of them, you know, they changed out the characters because they were saying, you know, they killed a guy, a girl in it. So instead they take it out and they put a guy in there, you know, they have to change all the names to a guy. What is the point? Uh, you know, and if there's something that's truly, you know, racist in there, change that, but you're changing things that are, you're, you're making it the game for a child. And I think you're going to lose a lot of the adults as you make this more and more and more for a child. Part of what people like for it is, you know, it's kind of made for adults. The game was made for adults, but you're making it for children. Because these words, these this wording is the wording that you would tell a child, not an adult. That's what you're concerned about. You're trying to treat, talk to your, your game players because you don't think they can handle it. And so you're talking to them like children. I don't get it. Like, they're not children. Treat, the people that are playing this game are supposed to be, what, 16 and older? They can handle hearing, you know, um, someone says, what are my huge melons? And then they change it to, what are my <laughs> melons? You know, I mean, they, wait, the wait, word wait, huge. Wait. But in the game, the melons are gigantic. The problem is they're, they're giant melons that you have to harvest. So, but they wait. didn't like the word, the fact that you use huge melons, you have to use melons. So either way, it's a sexual innuendo for boobs. Either way, but, but they didn't like the huge because that so for women that don't have huge, so that's probably so, so they're okay. Because guys can't so, grow. so they're okay with regular melons. Just huge melons are are off off the table. You know, no huge melons. Regular melons are okay. Uh, uh, you know, well, it's just hey, as as long as I know what kind stupid. of melons I need to be purchasing or looking at, then you know, I guess I'm good to go. And, and there were references to various uh, developers in here. They but took yeah, all them out. <laughs> so uh, but there's a huge list i mean it just scrolls down uh okay also they blizzard struck a settlement uh at you know, with for by creating an 18 million dollar fund uh for discrimination fund so the the high so activision blizzard creates this fund to compensate people who were harassed or discriminated discriminated sorry discriminated against in its workplaces how do you determine this? Because usually a law thing determines this. You go to court and they say they're going to pay you this much money because they did this amount bad. Ah, Why are no, they just you're... making a fund ah. to make it to pay people to feel like that they've been slighted? You're Brian. This is how they are going to work their way out of dealing with it in the court. They're, this is called the good faith action. Well, remember, they do their own internals. So... Yes, really, still, what are they paying? They're putting it into a a, a fund. This is um, this is a good this is a good well well part of it was a settlement with the mm -hmm. um, EEOC, which is the yeah. um, equal opportunity you know, EEO EEO equal opportunity of employment. California is it? Uh, no, EEO is is I think federal. Is, is that old um, worldwide federal? Okay. Or, yeah, yeah. I think that I think EEO. I know EEO is federal, so I assume it. Um, so this is oh wait this it's is the a, equal opportunities commission yes yeah so so yeah no this is created because of a settlement they reached with the EEOC mm -hmm. to create this fund to compensate employees who claim damages this is it's like a class action lawsuit so the money is now sitting in the fund if you were a person who was affected by it you'll be able to submit a claim and then somebody will process it and figure out if you're how are you going to verify not. this there's no there's no, yeah, I have no freaking idea. Process. Yeah, I mean, I sure, Good maybe question. people that prior to telling them you were going to give them money if they did it, that filed a claim, great. But who's not going to file a claim? So I was at the, you know, I was filling up my coffee and they said, that looks hot. I, I feel was, slighted. I was eating. I mean, I need. I was, one eighth of that's eighteen million. I'm good. Let's I, go. I was, I was eating some melons at work, and he said to me, "Wow, check out wow, those that melons." Looks like, like, <laughs> Those looks like some delicious melons. Wow, those oh, are some I tasty feel, looking I just need melons. To go file a report. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it's like a thousand dollars per report. We'll just stack these things up. Yeah, but wow, that's, that's nice what they're melons. that's what they're doing. Can I can I can I touch your melon? <laughs> yeah, you have to be really careful about what you bring. You know, if you ever had to get to bring food to for something for work, yeah. do not bring melons. Do, do not, not bring, bring melons. Do not bring Brothers. anything that has any yeah. kind of reference. Brought, yeah, no brought words. <laughs> Nothing of that nature. These are some giant waiters. <laughs> so, wow, I mean, ladies could, yeah. and gentlemen, huge waiters <laughs> over at Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's what they're that's what they're doing is creating this kind of side fund to handle people that got harassed or claim to have gotten harassed. Um, 
they also let me ask you this in here yeah let me ask you this because and and i mean it's you know we're poking fun at some of this because some of it is absurd. I mean, they're obviously, yes. you know, based on what we've seen and heard, there does appear that there was some serious issues going on at Blizzard in terms this of. This is not an equal reaction to what was done, though. But 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 that, and that's kind of that's kind of it. Is were there is, does any company have issues? Okay, the wide gambit from things of potential sexual misconduct and whatnot at work. To to uh, there's a million different things that that okay. large companies all deal with. My, I just after it, this, so th there's things that there's some additional things to this that are going to happen though. Sure. Um. So first of all, they said that any unclaimed funds will go towards nonprofit organizations that focus on advancing women in the video game and tech sectors or promoting awareness of gender quality. What's gender quality? It should be equality. I, the Verge has lost the ability. To type certain letters, I guess, uh, or towards future diversity and inclusion investment. So it's purely for people that are gay or women, correct? Nothing about like. race. There's not a single thing about race. So obviously nobody's racist there because they haven't mentioned a single thing about race here. So well, I guess not, that's an old issue, right? Well, it's not an old issue. It's just currently not being litigated, so that it's, so it, it goes away. So okay, so that doesn't need to go in this fund. But why are we giving these funds? Why aren't we saving them for future people that might be affected or towards pro uh, fixing issues in the company so it doesn't happen again? Instead, they're giving them to nonprofits to promote women in video games. They already can get hired. If you go to school and get a degree as a woman in video gaming, you can go to any place and they will hire you as long as you're not totally incompetent. Any place. A woman will get hired because... There's so many females in management now that a second a woman comes along, they'll hire her. Uh, you, can, you can argue how fa fair that is or not, uh, but that's how the state of the industry. The, 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 for the number of women that want to go into video game development, compared to the number of women that now are in the video game development, we're oversaturated. Not very many girls want to go into video game development. Pretty much anyone that wants to go into video game development that's a woman can or tech, they can, if they're willing to get a little bit of an education behind them, the, even a little bit, because the second you get hired by them, whether you're gay or you're a woman, you get a person assigned to you that is a coach for you. I don't get one of those, but no, in my company I do because you know they treat everyone equally, but I'm talking about like Google and places like this where these type of things are happening. I don't get a, a, a diversity coach. I don't get I don't get these coaches to help me at work to deal with everyday work problems. I have to deal with work by myself. They have all those tools. I don't have those tools, and yet they're saying that they have a hand down in the industry. I don't see it. Well, I, I think I, that any woman that wants to get hired in the industry that act, has a legitimate degree in in any form of tech or or, no, no, or you don't even no, 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 no. get a job. Not, not in legitimate degree. Anybody that is legitimately qualified to to get a job in any industry can get their job. But that yeah. but it comes down to qualification. I just uh, Brian, you know, we we have talked about Activision and Blizzard so much over the past couple of months, specifically on the Blizzard side of it. What are they doing about what are they doing in terms of video games though, Brian? We're not talking about anything that Blizzard is doing. I mean, Overwatch has been out for what? probably close to a decade now since overwatch yeah. has been out what else yep. uh, your world of warcraft is seeing you know continuing okay. a drop in subscribers what are we they seeing are hiring. from i'm sure they're, they're okay, hiring so, but, uh, but, no, my, no, but my point is game, but, the next but game on. that they're hinting at is like fallout that's the next one it's like a overwatch but, fallout oh that and that's fine but i just you know this is a company blizzard that revolutionized the video game industry with world of warcraft revolutionized yep. it became World of Warcraft, a cultural icon, right? You look at the South Park yep. episode with the with the WoW guy. I mean, cultural references all over the place. Yep. And now everything related to Valve is wokeness. Nothing about yep. nothing about video games that they're making at all, because they're not. Yep. It seems like they've gotten away from video game development and are in the business of virtue signaling now. Which well, that, that's the problem. Is these companies crumbles. get eaten from the inside out. The, these these groups realize there's a lot of money to be made when you can get all these things happening because they become consultants and coaches and all these different things. And this industry is a moneymaker. I'm not talking about the video game industry. I'm talking about the wokeness industry 
is a big mo money maker inside of these companies. Uh, and so I, I think that for them, you know, this is going to eat their company from the inside out. They need to treat everyone equally. If you want everyone to be treated equally, then treat them equally. Uh, and, and in here, if you want to, I, sure, they encourage women to get into video games, but you know what? As a company, they do that. They give them so many benefits over others. Uh, and you know, for, and there's different groups that get benefits, but they already get those things. Um, this sounds like it was a management issue, a culture, uh, and you know, how much was there? I don't know. I mean, we were reading from verge and places that I don't really trust that much when it comes to their reporting of this. So what really happened in that company? I'm not sure. Will we ever know? I don't know that we'll no. ever know. I'm sure there, there was some guys being crude. Uh, but you know, the second that you start bringing women, but it's because it was a man's industry. The second you start, it's just like hockey. The second you start bringing girls into a hockey team, you know, guy, the guys all of a sudden start talking different. It's just the way it is. You know, women talk differently when men aren't in the room. Shocker. Uh, you know, I'm sure my wife would back me up on that, but you know, this is something that just, that happens. And I don't agree. You know, I don't talk to people differently at work based on who or what they are. I don't. Um, that's what you have to teach is to treat everyone equally and quit trying to label them and figure out if there's someone that you need to treat more special than another person. Cause that's the state we're in right now. And I don't yeah, agree with it. I, you know, I don't agree with it either, but I'll say the saving grace from my standpoint, Brian, is this only goes so far before the tower of cards comes crashing to the ground. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are rapidly approaching that time in which this just goes so far that there's just nothing left, but total anarchy and chaos in terms of, you know, eventually, Brian, you're going to have a group of individuals working at a company like Blizzard that are so unqualified to do their job and were hired because of their sexuality, their race, their religion, whatever, that the company will be unable to operate. And when that finally happens, you will see CEOs and individuals in HR departments going, ah, shit, that, yep. that we, we, we overextended here. And now we have got a whole bunch of people that we are paying a whole bunch of money that are incompetent. They are not qualified yep. for the jobs in which they hold. We cannot continue to operate as a business. We are either going to have to fire them, which they won't do yep. because then, you know, that will create a whole thing in itself. And eventually you'll just start You'll start seeing some of these things start to crumble. There's no, the, yep. uh, eventually you replace all of the people that are actually qualified with diversity hires and individuals who are not qualified to meet your quotas and at a certain point, when those quota hires, those diversity hires outmatch and outweigh the actual people that are qualified, you are unable to operate as a company. Yeah. And, that and I think I'm that they're, I, that think, I think they're getting I think they're getting there. I think they're getting very close because just look at the quality of what's been happening in their company lately. I mean, here's they the thing. They're falling if you're, apart. If you're somebody, Brian, and, and I hate to bring politics into this, but if you're somebody that is not. If you're somebody that is center or maybe a little bit more right-leaning center and you're interested in video game development would you go and get a job at blizzard having looked at some of the crap not. that they put on no you absolutely wouldn't you absolutely wouldn't. i mean that that's what i've said before i've i was a contractor with google for over a year went and and they specifically put me on for over a year to give me this option because i was there for one year and one month that i was on that contract so that i would tip over the year so mm -hmm. that I, if I wanted to, I could get fast tracked to get hired at Google. I chose not to because there was no way after seeing some of the things in that company and the way that it was run and how I was starting to back. This is over 10 years ago that I started seeing this happen. And I saw the beginning of the train of some of these things happening where uh, I was like, there's no way that I would go down there because the second that they even got a hint that I thought different politically, I would be treated differently. Uh, and I don't meet any of their special groups. I was already treated. There was people that were, you know, just I, that were in certain positions that shouldn't be purely based on, uh, you know, little labels that they have. They had no idea of the technology and the things like that, but they were in a position and that they were there. Right. And that's, that was frustrating. I just, I wanted to be in a place where we would thrive, you know, where you could just do the best you can and the rest didn't matter. As long as you did your best, you would be judged on that. And I didn't feel like that's what happened to Google at, at all. And I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go there. 
It's unfortunate, but it's not surprising. And who knows? Yeah. Uh, it, it eventually, it eventually ends. Yeah, and I th- and I definitely think it will. All right, let's uh, let's catch a couple small things here. Sure. Before we run out of time, um, first of all, there was a a post apoc survival sandbox that was canceled, and it's one that I actually had. I really tried. I remember play testing this. Cause I told you one day, I'm like, I'll play it and try it out. Uh, and I played and it was me and the developers <laughs> playing on this test. And the thing was so rough. Uh, and I was like, I'll try again. But the th- it was just, you know, they had most of a game, but you could tell like people weren't playing it and they were having a really rough time. So they, they've canceled that. So Eden grad has officially been canceled. Uh, you know, and they did it quietly. It's pretty much just asked steam to remove them from the store. Um, yeah. so I probably still have it on my, my account, but you can no longer purchase it. This was a Kickstarter. It was just a Kickstarter that never really took off. It was kind of well, like a Mad Max style of a game. They raised nearly $60,000 in their Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they, they worked on it for quite a while. I mean, for years they've worked on this. Yeah. I think this is 20. Yeah, this 16 is 2016 is when they did their kick, their Kickstarter. Yeah, their Kickstarter was last updated October 18, 2016. And they raised 40 just just close to 42,000 pounds, which comes out to about 60 grand. Yeah. Well, these, and, the, you know, the they, time, I don't know. I don't know what it's I don't know what it's worth. They, right I mean, now, they got yeah. yeah, they got they got fairly far on this. Um it's just there's not there weren't people playing it. You know, it was kind of like an MMO Fallout style feel. And uh the graphics look kind of old. It just never, never really went anywhere. You know, it had kind of an MMO feel, but it just, it never took off. I, I did try. I tried to play it a number of times. Uh, it just never had anyone else for me to play with. What do you think it's all time peak players were? Probably 30. 192. 192. Well, that was when Five I was playing, ago. there was, there was three people, well, three people, the two developers and me. Well, I'm looking at the chart. It, they, it does not appear that they've had more than two players in the game at any point in time since about July of 2019. Yes, and that's probably what, because that's when I think they were kind of doing a push. It was pretty much two of their developers you know, going around looking for other people to play so they could test mechanics. Um, mm. No one else was playing it, and it wasn't like a horrible game. It just wasn't a good game. You know, well, uh, yet, you know, I think they're still building it. Well, and the game is, it's not on Steam anymore, but looking at the um, Steam uh, rating system, it looks like it was about a 50 50 split in terms of yeah. good reviews and bad reviews. Literally 50%. There, but there was 243 good reviews, Brian, and 243 bad views straight down the middle yeah. on what it was. So it was very I think they just 50/50. ran 50. I think they ran out of money. You know, I think it just, you know, they, they never quite got to a point where they could start bringing in sales to get people to play it. And, you know, they don't have any more money to develop it. You know, they, they did a kind of a sale, a steam sale and a few things to try to keep some funds to keep, keep moving the game forward, but they couldn't, they could not do it. And so kind of sad, but I don't, I don't think, I think the game was built in such a way that looks so old. I don't know that it really would have taken off. Um, You know, nowadays it's too easy to, to make a game that looks a lot better. Uh, you know, in a very similar manner. All right. Uh, another thing is, you know, Twitch has been getting some flack because they have this do not ban list the, for the big streamers, ah, you know, good. so that they don't they don't get suspended for little things. People are all mad about this, but how could you not? Because any big streamer, do you know how many times they're probably getting reported just because people oh, think it's God, funny? No. Yeah, because they, yeah, they hate they're, them. They're not going to let the, you know, three strikes ban kick Dr. Disrespect back in the day off or, you know, get one of the new stream, you know, current streamers and get them kicked off the air that are making them tons of money. They whitelist all those people. They will hand remove them from the system just like they did Dr. Dr. Disrespect when they felt it was necessary. Uh, So there's a lot of people kind of raising a stink. That's got to be pretty buck standard, I would assume. I just, I can't, I, I was so shocked that people are, you know, acting like this is a big deal. This, I assumed this from the get go. You know, this, how could you not? But, you know, they're part of this, I think the steam hack and all that are the, so the, the Twitch hack and all that they're starting to see, you know, there's a list in there that says, you know, for this username, um, do not suspend 
ex, ex, you know, ex escalate violations too. And then whoever their representatives are at Twitch to deal with their, their type of, uh, violation. So this is very standard practice, but, but of course, you know, people are going to get bent out of shape about it. Um, another thing is, uh, EA. So let's talk about EA for a minute. One thing that's sure. separate from this other issue I want to talk about is they say that they're going to start openly sharing their patents to increase uh, game accessibility. Well, that defeats the entire and, purpose and, of the patent. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the game, you know, these are whatever things that make games more accessible for people with various disabilities, whatever you want to call it, medical issues, things like that. Um, so they're going to start opening those up. One big thing is Apex Legends. They have some patents on so probably some of those things that are used in the way that they do them mm -hmm. uh, that probably are a little bit better than they're probably looking at it saying these are better than what other people are able to do or are doing. So this, this opening these patents would allow other people to put the very similar like ping system. Uh, and if they do it in a certain way based on like sounds or something like that, that other people didn't think of yet to help somebody who maybe has hard visual you know, things with visual so they can hear something which gives them an indication of what it is things like that those are the type of things that they patent because you know they've done some sort of research and found that it makes it easier for a person to play the video game right that's what the point of a patent is because you put research into it and you found this um, yeah. so they're opening those up and allowing uh for other people to use a lot of these technologies which is i think a good idea um now i did hear uh, there was something i didn't put in the notes last week but it was saying that there's a chance that EA is going to drop FIFA because of their licensing fees being too high. And boy, I, that would I be interesting. one little ping because FIFA is, you know, contrary to what our audience might think, the FIFA games are incredibly popular and soccer yes. or football, depending on where you are in the world is in, I think it's the most watched, but I think it's the most watched and it's definitely the most played sport in the world. Yes. Okay. Well this week, guess what happened? <laughs> EA is no longer going to be uh, keeping the FIFA exclusivity license. Are you shitting and me? So, no, I because I heard rumors. I saw rumors on some this sites is huge. where they were, where they were saying it looks like EA may drop FIFA just because the license for it is so huge. Um, I'm and uh, yeah, but I'm sure it is. Now EA is saying, "Oh, you know, we're we want to go see other publishers." EA is or sorry, FIFA is trying to spin this in their direction. So you can tell FIFA hit their publicity people real quick because all of a sudden all these places are put. Yeah, FIFA says it never really liked EA anyways. FIFA says gaming license agreements should be exclusive. FIFA hints at giving ain't EA no, the red card. Ain't no other the, company be, gonna. Ain't no other company gonna grab FIFA. It's only <laughs> EA. I mean, it's there's. There's two companies that I could see publishing a, a FIFA game: yeah. EA and Ubisoft. Ain't nobody else gonna touch it. Yes, because nobody else wants and it. So, well, exactly. And this is something. And that who I'm, else I'm, makes sports games? I mean, there isn't that many big two K. But you've got two K, EA. That's it. I mean, there's just yeah. there's not that many video game publishers and developers in the market of sports games because there's frankly. Oh. Not that many of them, Brian. You get an NBA you, each year. You get a Madden. You get a FIFA. You get an NHL. Yeah. That's about it. Four or five, maybe yeah. six or seven games the entire year. Yes, and so this is going to be something. This is going to be a little bit different because, as you said, all those other ones are locked down, you know, where you don't get a ton of college sports, you know, uh, oh, yeah. NFL yeah. sports. They they. They get those exclusivity rights to be able to have all these people inside of their their game, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know. And so this will be interesting to see if they kind of diversify and let smaller licenses, let smaller games make ones that just happen to include their characters. They make may make still a decent amount of money in the end and be less subject to someone screwing around with them like this. They're promoting it because they want to stay marketable, right? They don't want to be look like they were dropped, so they keep saying, you know. Uh, FIFA hints at giving EA the red card. Da, 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 da. No, um, from what I saw, first news before FIFA said a word was EA was looking at dropping them. Uh, and so, you know, you could go, we'll see what history plays out if there's any ever anything that comes of it that that proves which one way or one way or the other. But this is uh this is this is something that I, I kind of thought of it was gonna be totally speculation when that's why I didn't include it in the notes. I was like, 
okay, there's somebody writing something crazy. You know, FIFA, EA's dropping FIFA. Okay, well, they did it. <laughs> they did it this week. Uh, and, but the only reason, that's why I think it's kind of fishy. All these places are spinning it towards FIFA when that's not the rumor that I heard first. I've heard it was the opposite. Hmm. Um, all right. And then let's, let's see. I'm trying to make sure we, we hit. I've got some things that don't really matter as much. Um, do, let's talk about a. I don't. You want to talk about a game really quick? Um, yeah, sure. Show off because there's, there's a trailer for a game. We could do that and then kind of roll out from there. Sure. Uh, so there's an Unreal Engine game called Wronged Us uh, that's being developed, and it's kind of like a Silent Hill, Dark Souls type of a game. Uh, there is a video for it. Looks yeah, pretty spooky, but it looks like a, a. Yeah, it looks like a pretty nice game that's going to be coming up. Uh, it's looking at being released in 2022. Okay, um, so a couple years out. There's not a lot of details, but there is this teaser video, and I thought people might find it interesting because I think this is on Unreal Engine 5. All right, let's take a look. That's the shittiest trailer I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, it's 2022. I, so I pretty much the main thing there's nothing. <laughs> so it's guy because let's spooky watch it again. Let's Silent watch Hill. it again. Okay. Four by three. Yeah. Looks like Alan Wake, the main character from Alan Wake. Yeah. They're wrong with us. So that's what they that's what they've teased. But I did look at the you know, look at the I'm environment. It looks like it I'm, might be on Real Engine I'm Five. Very, I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> I just thought, hey, there, there's a new game coming out. But this is going to be—it's a new survival game. So I wanted to be first because if this becomes a big game, we could say we talked about it mid October of 2021 before anyone else was talking about this game. That's no, well, and, here, and here's the thing: these games, which would typically be, you know, if, if call it a Silent Hill or whatever, you're talking about a four, five, six, maybe seven hour at the most story. That, the, yeah. uh, that is in comparison to making an open world survival game mm -hmm. that's n this is actually relatively obtainable and because that was its debut so i guess you know they're kind of showing off uh my main thing is i just want to see what kind of technologies they're using i don't care about the stories i can see okay, okay let me show let me show you can you play it again and i'll show you what i'm noticing in this look at the woman's dress you know the okay let's wait till I this. Uh, so they're doing, you know, they're using fabric phys physics. Uh, there's wind physics in this. It looks like it's Unreal Engine 5 because of some of the way that you know, the high detail of the rocks, but that could be just really well rendered, you know, with it could, it, that could not truly not be. Um, but yeah, it looks, I mean, you can see they, they've got AI tech of birds flying in the sky. You know, there is some work behind what they've shown already, which is 10 times far beyond a lot of the ones that we see, you know, of a guy running around with a gun. Mm, yeah. I'm looking at the technology in the world they built, not what they're actually showing there. You know, like the people. I'm, but I'm looking at the tech. Look at the they're they've put some time into some pretty cool physics and things. They're using a lot of technology of the game, which is a little bit promising for me. Yeah, but they've actually they know how to use it. PH is saying this is Unreal's technology. Most developers can't can't put it in there. They can get a guy to run around with a gun, but they can't figure out how to do that kind of stuff. These mm -hmm. guys know how to do all that stuff. That shows me something. That's why I think that there might actually be a game here. Well, there you go. So we'll see. I, other than that, I don't think there's a, there's some other little things that we don't really need to cover. Um, uh, Bethesda. Now, Bethesda, one thing I found interesting is their their Deathloop game is going to be in mm -hmm. Steam and not even in their own launcher. Well, that, they're going, they're, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It's, they, yeah, they're, they're moving away, uh, you know, so they're not even releasing their own games on their own launcher now, which is, well, is strange. I, but well, that's not, it's not, that's all, I mean, it's owned by Microsoft now, right? That's Bethesda's probably why. Microsoft. Why would they put it on the Bethesda launcher? They have the Game Pass, they have, they have the store, yeah, they don't need my, it. So my, Microsoft, no point. I bet you they'll get rid of that thing pretty soon. Microsoft is not. My you know, Microsoft is not opposed to Steam. They've got, um, you know, the Halo Master Chief Collection and plenty of other Xbox mm -hmm. games. Microsoft Flight Simulator, that stuff all on Steam. Microsoft is not afraid of Steam yeah. and actually understands that there's a lot of uh, 
a lot of big player base there on Steam. So that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah, and and I'm not sure. I mean, this I don't know if it's on. Uh, PH is asking, you know, is that on the Game Pass yet? I, it will be. I'm Probably, pretty sure. I assume it will be. It, it will be, game. but I'm not sure if it's on there right now. I haven't gone to look at my Game Pass yet to see if they've actually released it on there, but um, it will be on there. Uh, another thing, we'll, we'll just call, cover a couple things with with Bethesda. We're, run, we're running thing, a little. Uh, yeah, we're running. We're, uh, we're at an hour ten right now. So yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just get a few notes. So uh, one thing, Starfield, the game that they're going to be coming out with here pretty soon, they were saying that it has twice as much dialogue as Skyrim. Okay. Uh, just give you an idea of the, of the size of it. Uh, and there was another thing we had about, you know, mods getting hired. They're starting to hire some of the Fallout uh, London mod writers, or, what, or one of them has been hired there for their work. So they're still working on stuff. Um, I, I, I bet you, I, I'm kind of happy they got by Microsoft because hopefully Todd Howard has a little less influence over there. That's my. Wow, that's, that's, th- that's a hot take. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I know just, you're. I, oh, that's I know. my. Well, I fall out 76 still, you know, still looms and, and rubs a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Now I'm, I'm, if there was somebody to purchase Bethesda, I don't think they needed to be purchased. They were going to though. And if somebody was going yeah. to purchase them, I think Microsoft by far was the only player. It was that a I'm good getting. choice. Yeah. Very, very much a good choice. So yeah, couldn't, couldn't agree with that yeah. more. So, but they're still growing. It seems like they're growing a little bit more, uh, you know, now that Microsoft bought them. So same thing. Uh, CD Pro- Another note I had was CG Project Red. They're hi- starting to hire mod makers. That's becoming a new thing where people are making these mods that are as good as what these their internal developers are creating, and they're hiring out of those mods. That's another perfect way for your if you want to hire people that are truly qualified and have a natural ability to do it. Hire the mod makers because either sure. they have a natural ability or they've taught themselves to do it. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's becoming, we've got two companies here that have done it recently, and I think that's going to become a bigger and bigger thing. All right, that's all I got. You, you ready for us to roll out of here, or is there anything yeah. else you wanted to No, sir, I'm first? ready for us to roll out. All right, so if you want to get me at Brian Aldrich on Gab and Parlor, uh, my blog, biteoftech.com, go ahead and check it out. If you want to go to our website, infectionpodcast.com, make sure you go and join our server on Discord. If you do that, uh, you'll be able to... First of all, submit news topics you think we need to be covering. If there's a game coming up that you think we should talk about, you can hit that there. Uh, we also have a lot of, uh, our, if you want to get reminded of when the live show starts, we've got it on the event calendar there. Uh, a lot of good things with Discord, free app on the desktop, mobile, and web-based. Uh, if you want to watch the podcast, we've got Twitch, YouTube, BitChute, and DLive that you can do that through. Also, a podcast extras if you want to see some of the pre and post shows that we do. Uh, and then the listen-only version, the podcast on the lower right. If you want to listen, you can do that on lots of different ways through uh, web-based apps. They have mobile apps, all kinds of things. That's very old technology. It works a lot of places. Uh, if you are going to listen, though, I encourage you to follow along on those show notes because we have links for each topic that we discussed uh, during the show. And some of them are extras, a little bit of extra information if you want to dig more into it than what we discuss. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to the top of the support tab. There's infectionpodcast.com forward slash support. We've got Subscribe Star, uh, Prime Gaming, Humble Bundle, Amazon Prime, a lot of different uh, different ways to support us. And hopefully that'll all go towards our convention next year that I'm hoping will happen. Yes, very much looking forward to that. Uh, Brian, as always, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, just looking at the calendar, we will uh, catch up with you next Tuesday. Sounds good. Uh, I will see you then. All righty, folks. Well, if you want to uh, follow me outside of uh, this uh, fantastic program, I do another show. It's it's pretty good as well. Uh, it's called uh, Wilmington's Morning News. There's a two-hour podcast that is delivered uh, to your podcast app each and every day. You can find out more details uh, by going to nickcraig.com or just open up your favorite podcast app and searching Wilmington's Morning News. Well, that's going to do it for another episode of Infection. If you missed any portion of the show, want to check out maybe videos, that illustrious trailer we just saw for Wronged Us, you can visit our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.